the inner greatness of man, at least in our culture, perhaps in our time, the inner greatness of man announces itself in the form of a question. Now that's interesting. The great question is already the beginning of the greatness within. The great question is already the beginning of the great answer. But it's not yet the answer, but it's the beginning of it. It shows that there is something else in me that's not all this other stuff. There may not be God yet, but it is uh, something that may lead to something very high. So the question becomes respected much more than if it's something to figure out right away. Because I, now I feel I'm in touch with a part. Now for that, to know this great questioning as really being a, a step toward how my life is going to be meaningful, that takes help either from a professor or from others or whatever it is, it, it's not something that's automatic. Because I know I've, I've touched something in myself, but now I need help. To, I need ideas and I need help from others who have been around, the, around this thing more to respect what it is. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I find that very interesting, very hopeful, because the hope is in the question, not in the answer, in that sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in that, though, having, realizing you need now other, other people, you need, I can't just from the book, uh, from a book reading idea, you know, I read Plato, maybe that, or Emerson, it leads me somewhere, but then at that point, maybe you can talk a little bit more about how philosophy isn't just something intellectual reading, but well, what do you mean in terms of engaging and or? Well, I think that's a very great question, um, and I think philosophy has a noble purpose, ultimately, a very noble purpose, to lead us to support a search for a path, a way, a way of life that can change us in a fundamental way that can bring us to the possibility of becoming another, uh, a real human being, a deep human being, a full human being. And I would say it's one of the uh, markers, one of the helps one of the signposts, inner and outer, that lead toward in the direction of a path, of a way, of a practice, of a we're a way of life that actually has a transformative effect on us. It, it itself may not necessarily be the transform transformation, it may not be the practice of studying philosophy may not become transformative except in certain cases where it's part of the path like it was per, probably for in the Stoics and probably in uh, with Socrates this, we don't know what went on outside of what we have read in books but there probably was a path away in many of the philosophers who, who, who about whom we know only their written words so in that sense, philosophy leads to a, to a door, and, and in a way, these paths, these practices, transformational practices that you find at the heart, sometimes hidden, sometimes we don't know about them, <clears throat> but at the heart of great religious traditions, which we never see, particularly in our contemporary culture. It's hard to know they exist at all. Um, but also other teachings uh, that have and other ways of living that have influenced society 
over the years that have been responsible for great monuments and great works of art and great systems of philosophy, which are part of the way of leading people, hoping, showing them the light that there's something up, there's something, then it could, that's its great role, I think. And this philosophy is one of the ways that I would say great paths, great spiritual transformational paths leave their message out in the world uh, to, to help people find the way. And there's works of art, great works of art do that, great music does it, uh, many, many different ways that, uh, that we consider at the heart of culture are there to help us, like a magnet, be drawn toward finding a transformational path which cannot be still public, so out there as philosophy can, because some of the great ideas that are at the heart of these transformational paths would be misunderstood if they were put out in a very, in a very raw form. Um, <clears throat> and there's another, there's another aspect we need to speak about with this, which we'll come to, but. Um, the study of philosophy in universities, I think at one time, was, not, was very much associated with what we call contemplation. And that was a word which implied um, something which was an activity which was not for physical pleasure, not for f financial gain, not for success in life in the usual sense of the term, not for accomplishing certain very good, important tasks out there in the world, not for action in, this, in that sense of the word, not for building and creating so much out there, but for a kind of useless knowing in this, in this, in that sense. That means an understanding, a practice, a use, a uh, an enterprise, which is not pragmatic, which is for something else in us in our life which is, has a different purpose than making our external life what it needs to be made. We need to act in life. We need to do things. We need to have our families. We need to make our, our practices and help each other, et cetera, et cetera. All that pride with external life. But there's another element in us which is not concerned with that so much as concerned with something deep, deep within or above. And that part, Philosophy was, used to be taught, I think, as a kind of way of, of uh, engaging a little bit in the contemplative life. Life which uh, a, a kind of um, what we might call silence, in a, in a deep sense, of, in a broad sense of the term, that is just to be quiet, to not be out there in this necessary part of our life, but not the, it's not the only part of us. We're also, we also have a, a metaphysical center. We also have a, a verticality, inner verticality is a word, an inner, um, an inner, there's no word for it in English. It's word spiritual has been so, you know, it's, it's sort of spiritual, but there is an element in us which we need to nourish, and for that we need to have study things like music, like art, like philosophy, like logic, even like geometry, not in order to make land measurements only, but in order to understand law and truth in its most naked form. Uh, that to touch that part of ourselves. Philosophy is one of the essential ways of doing that. And there were, that used to be called, and now the words don't mean much, liberal education. 
now it's getting, it's more and more, that education is to make us get jobs and do good things and to, to, all that's very necessary, I don't know, but that's not the whole of the purpose of education, maybe not even the most important part. So, but it used to be that the, the liberal arts used to be have that, even 50, 60 years ago, it still had a flavor of that. I'm not studying philosophy in order to get a job, so I, because of my, as a lawyer or something like that. I'm studying philosophy because it opens my question. It brings me in touch, as we spoke about, with another, it supports this other version of my vision of myself. I studied literature, not in order to figure out how anthropological place things about different cultures and, and, and not, to, not to get political aims uh, satisfied or put out views of, of a human life that are more preferable politically or socially or one way or the other, but because it touches my wish to feel and know something essential about the meaning of life.